Miners. Today we're going to be learning about Linux. So let's get right into it. So today we're going to be learning about Linux and this is going to be for the new user who hasn't, you know, used Linux before. And um, this is not for advanced people. So like if you're an advanced Linux user or no Linux or whatever the case is, this is going to be a very basic tutorial. So I would just skip this video if I was you guys, if you guys already know this stuff, but you're more than more, more than welcome to watch, but let's go ahead and get in today's video. Um, I get a lot of questions and I also get a lot of people who are uh, very scared of Linux, right? They're like, oh, I can't do this, or I'm afraid I'll break it, or I don't understand it, or there's, a, there's various things, right? <clears throat> and, um, there's some people who like message me every day about, you know, um, you know, how to get things working on some of their Linux softwares and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm willing to help people if you're willing to help yourself, but I can't hold your hand the whole time because sometimes you need to explore and troubleshoot and figure things out on your own because that's exactly the way that I did it. Right. And the one thing you got to be not afraid of in Linux is being scared of it or being afraid to fail, right? I, I, I mean, I'll be honest. I I built a uh, open source cloud solution for Terra, right? At some point, we don't use it anymore, but I did build it, and I used um, I used uh, CentOS as the distro, and um, and that's another that's another Linux distro for all you new people. And it took me like, like a good, like week or two to get that to work. Right. And I was, you know, following like 10 different guides to get this to work. And it was always failing. And eventually I just kept doing it. Right. Like I would get 20% through the install and then I would bork it. Right. And I would have to delete the VM and start over. Right. Don't be afraid to, delete the VM. And I suggest if you're learning Linux to use Proxmox or another hypervisor to get, you know, um, this way you could delete the install really quickly and also spin up and install very quickly because you are going to make mistakes and you, you can, you can break things, but at least this way with Proxmox, you can just delete the VM and start over. Right. And that's just kind of how it is with Linux. Like you'll get through an install and let's say the first try, you get through 20%, and then something happens and the installation's borked. Okay, no problem. You delete it. And then you're going through, you know, the install again. And let's say instead of 20% of the time, you made it through like 60% of the install. And eventually you'll make it down to the finish line, right? And it does take time. And I'm not going to lie, some of the guides out there are outdated. So some of them are incomplete, you know, as far as staying current of how to like, you know, keeping things up to date and stuff like that. But the whole point of the story is, don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid to, uh, you know, to to make mistakes or have it not work the first time because I'm not a Linux power user by any means and I make mistakes all the time. So go ahead. Let's jump over and um, we're, we're going to jump right into this and we're going to be uh, learning some Linux commands. Let's go ahead and let's get right into it. Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use Linux. This is going to be really basic stuff, and we're just we're just going to kind of just move around a little bit and get some of the basic feels for Linux, right? So the first thing I'm going to teach you is ls, ll, and la, right? Very useful tools. They're used for figuring out what files and directories are there, as well as it can give you some information like what are the current... Um, the current privileges that you guys have on those files, right? So we're doing ls of where we are, and we only have three folders here. And then if we do an ll, right, this is actually going to give us all the all the files that we've seen before, as well as hidden folders uh, that could be write protected folders. And then it's going to list the current permissions of each one of these users. And then we can also do an la which is going to show us all those other um, folders that maybe I don't have permissions for and show me the folders. So each one of these shows different things. LS kind of shows you what you have access to. LL shows you what 
you have access to, what Root has access to, what privileges you have, and LA just shows all of the folders, even ones you may not have permissions for. So really useful tool to figure out where we're kind of going, right? The first basic thing is, is we're gonna learn how to change a directory. And what that means is, is we're just gonna move to a folder essentially, right? Is, 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 is I guess a layman's term if you're trying to relate it to Windows, right? We're gonna move into the uh, YouTube section, right? And then we could do an LS here, or we could do an LA or LL, right? And there's only one file here. It's the test.conf file, right? And before we start testing this file, the first thing I wanna do is, is, is we're going to make a directory, right? So directories are just thinking of them as a, just like we're just moving into different folders, okay? Really easy to do. And you're probably like, okay, well, how do I do, how do I make a directory? And we're gonna do mkdir, I'm just gonna call it, I don't know. Okay. okay, now if we do an ls, now you can see that the directories is blue, right? Directories are blue in Linux, right? Text files are gonna be white. So now let's go into the king folder, okay? And then we can do an ls and there's nothing here, right? Because we obviously just made this directory, right? Didn't exist before. Now we're going to start learning some of the text editors, right? And, I'm mo and today I'm just gonna teach you the very basic one that I like to use that I'm comfortable with, which is Nano. Nano's a pretty widely used text editor in uh, Linux, but you could also use things like Vim. And Vim is also a very good one, but I, I believe it to not be as intuitive. And I think Nano is much easier um, for first time users. And you could choose to do Vim too. Um, so it's, it's whatever your preference is, either use Vim or Nano. And what we're gonna do is, is <clears throat> when you're using Nano, you can either um, you can either alter a current file like a configure JSON file, or you can create files, right? So we're gonna create this, we're gonna do nano, and then we're gonna do, I don't, I don't know, king.conf, okay? And now we're gonna get into, now we're actually inside of nano, the text editor. Now we can add all kinds of things like, you know, we could just, and then I'm just like making stuff up. I'm gonna, you know, King is the 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 greatest. He killed Panda with a frying pan. Okay, and let's say we wanted to save this file, right? We could do a Control X and then Y and then Enter. Now we can do an ls, and now you can see inside of our directory here, we have the king.conf, uh, right? And let's say we wanted to read that, but we didn't want to edit that file, right? So we could use another, another tool called cat. We're going to cat this king.conf folder, okay? And then it, all, all, it, all, all cat's going to do is it's just going to read the file and then spit it right back out what's inside that file. That's all it's going to do, read it and spit it right back out. So this way we don't actually have to go into the text editor to read it, right? Because sometimes you may accidentally hit a key and save it and then you're going to break stuff, right? So if you just want to read what the text editor is, you can use cat. You could also use a, you could also use a tail. Uh, which is another another way to read the file. You could also use tail, and there's other ways to use tail, where it's like if you're trying to read a log in a miner, but we won't get into all of that. So, and it says here, King is the is is the greatest. He killed Panda with a frying pan in PUBG. So we're in our YouTube directory. I didn't mean to get out of there all the way like that. I was just being, I just wasn't thinking. So we're back in the YouTube directory, right? And we can see our King you know, directory or folder. Well, we can also remove directories, right? Let's say I don't I don't like this guy. We can, so let's say we want to remove the directory and all of its contents, right? And let's say we don't want to take the time to delete all of that. 
you can use rm hyphen r lowercase r that is and the name of the folder we can see here that the king folder and that file i made is deleted right mm -hmm. and you can see here i made a mistake too i did rm king and then i had to think about it and i had to figure out so just realize this that everybody makes mistakes and everybody is learning in this in this process of learning right there's no way it's very hard to remember everything and it's okay to make mistakes so just just keep that in guys you know moving forward so that's going to be today's video and you know i hope this kind of shows you guys how to build and be inside of linux right and then also to get a little more comfortable with it maybe get get a proxmox going get get just a basic ubuntu server going start going in there start learning start typing some commands start breaking some stuff the best way to learn this is is honestly just by doing it and you'll get better over time right it's gonna take practice it's to me it's always however much time you put in something is how much you're gonna get out of yeah is how much you're gonna get out of it and that's really stuck with me so if you put no time into learning linux well you're never gonna learn it so all right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope this kind of helps some of the new people. I'll do some more videos along the way, teaching you guys some some Linux. Now, by no means necessary, I, am I an expert in Linux, but these are just some of the commands that some of us other users use on a daily basis to kind of help navigate around and figure out how to get stuff done. All right, so this is Monikin giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.